Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 39 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. We're going back to sound again, and we're looking at the genesis today. Now, in the past, we wrote a driver known as Chibi Sound, which was for simple bleep sound effects for your Space Invaders type games. Now, this was okay for very simple games, but I wanted to see if I could take things further. And so, basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to write an upgraded version of this driver that is intended for more complex sound effects with multiple channels, and more specifically for music. Now this is being referred to as Chibi Sound Pro. Uh, the Pro um, moniker is a bit of a joke. It's based on Sound Blaster Pro. I'm not really suggesting it's that professional. It's just a joke title anyway. Um, what it's designed to do is it's designed to allow us more functionality on every system that I support in my tutorials. All the Z86502 and 68000 systems that it's possible. This driver runs on it and that means we can make sound effects and play music now in the same way on all these systems. Now the way that this driver works is it takes three parameters. Now the first of these parameters is in D3, it's a single byte, and bits 0 to 6 are the channel num number, from, so 0 to 127, and the seventh bit enables or disables the noise for that channel. The next byte is in D6, and that is the volume. Finally, there are two bytes, a word, a 16-bit word, and that is the pitch in D2. Now, the layout of these was originally ported from the Z80, and the functionality we're effectively trying to simulate the AY sound chip in some ways. The, the AY sound chip of the Amstrad CPC is my sort of baseline. Every other system has to attempt to match that functionality where it can, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, in today's example, we're going to use the legacy Sega Master System support of the SN76489. Now, this is a simple sound processor which uses a single byte parameter to port C0011. We just write a byte in the correct format, and that will control the various attributes of the three tone channels, and the, there's also one noise channel. Now, we're going to do that today. This is, a, say, this is literally a port of the um, Sega Master System version of this driver. Next time, we're going to look at FM synth synthesis, which I think does a better job of what we're trying to do today. But I think it's still worth looking at this, um, this example today, if for no other reason than I've already written it, basically. Um, we, we got, I've written it, so I'm going to make an, a video about it. And I'd say it does work fairly well, but the, um, the range of tones is not really adequate for music. I don't think that's the limitation of why I don't feel this is good enough with the original Chibi Sound. This Sega Master System emulation was good enough. Anyway, let's go over and let's actually hear the Chibi Sound in action. The Chibi Sound Pro, should I say. Okay, so let's get the oscilloscope up. There it is. Now, we have two test routines here. The first one is the Chibi Sound Pro test. Now, this is just a very simple routine that allows us to hear a tone. And then if I use the joystick up and down, I can go through a range of pitches here. So that is, um, that's how I basically am able to test the driver and also I um, use this to calibrate the frequency table for the various notes in the octave. I've got a um, frequency analyzer that, look, that tells me what the current playing tone is and I tend to use that. That's how I find things work best. Now, um, the, in addition to that, there is the TB Tracks software. This is um, the music player. This will play a binary music file that I created with my Chibi Tracker, which is the Chibi Tracker Pro, which I'm currently working on. And um, this creates a file that will work on any system. The, the important thing is the binary can be exported once and the same binary can be played on any system. So it, it's, it, it's platform independent, CPU independent, and um, destination memory address independent. That's an option that can be turned on. And this means that we don't need to keep exporting our file if we're writing a program for, if we're writing a game for five systems, we don't need to export the music file five different times with five different settings. So uh, that's something that I, I'm trying to do to reduce the amount of um, load on me of porting games. So you can hear here, this is the um, music that was originally um, the Chibi Akamas theme from the first game. It was originally written in Arcus Tracker and I converted it to my own music file format, exported it as a binary for the Amstrad CPC and it's that same binary playing today on the 68000 Genesis with no conversion to that binary file. It's the music software that is handling that. And so that is... That's the purpose of the Chibi Sound Pro Driver. The Chibi Sound Pro Driver is a hardware abstraction layer in between the multi-platform music software, which will work on any 68,000 based system. And this is the platform specific driver that handles this system. Now, the big problem with the Sega Master System emulation, as I say, we're using the Sega Master System hardware today, 
is that the range of frequencies it's capable of is a little bit limited. It can't do the full low range of frequencies. And you can hear here that the music is sounding quite terrible. And the reason for that is I've disabled this SMS transpose, which artificially raises the octave to a range that is more the, the Sega Master System is more capable of, but it's not actually sounding the same as it should on this system. So anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over the driver for this system, this Sega Master System compatibility driver, and we're going to learn how it's configured and how it works on this system. Now, the first thing again we'll mention is the octave here. So we've got this octave lookup table here. And this gives a sequence of 16-bit values. And what this is, is a lookup table for the music software so that whenever we want to play a note within the octave, at whatever octave we want to play it, we can look up the 16-bit value that needs to be passed to the D2 register to play the correct pitch for that note. Now, we've got the, um, the pure tones here. If you want a sharp or a flat, all you do is you add the two tones together, you add the two values together and divide it by two. So you calculate an in-between value between them for a sharp or a flat. Now, um, the other thing, as I've said, is the um, the lower frequency range is not very good, as, as you heard earlier. Um, it, there isn't really the full range of frequencies that we would like there to be, and so um, what is often a good idea is to skip this and effectively push everything up one octave and that gives a pitch that doesn't match the intention of the original song but it allows the notes to, to actually sound you know like the proper notes that they should be just at one octave higher now another limitation of the Sega Master System hardware is the way that the noise works now we basically have two choices with regards to noise we can either use a simple noise, in which case we are using the, th the fourth channel, the channel three, if you consider them to be zero to three, and that channel is only capable of noise, but it's only capable of a very limited range of frequencies of noise. Now, if I turn on this SMS simple noise here, we will now use the simple noise functionality. Now, if I play the noise now, basically what you will hear is that there are only really three different frequencies of noise here and that's because we are using the simple noise effect and that just gives us two bits to define the noise and the value of three in there is actually a special value which we'll see in a moment. Now the alternative to simple noise is where we use one of the tone channels as the actual frequency. And now you can hear we have a wider range of noises. Now, why wouldn't we want to do that? Well, the problem with doing that is we're effectively using one of our three tone channels to actually define the noise frequency, which just leaves us with two tone channels. So we've got a choice of the trade-off. We either have very simple noise effects or we have complex noise effects in just two tone channels. And um, this driver will allow you to do either. Now, let's take a look at the various functions of this driver. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is, um, as I say, we've got one noise channel. However we use it, we've only got one noise channel. And this driver is required to provide a noise channel for each of the tone channels. So we're gonna to have to simulate a noise channel for each of the tone channels. And whenever any of the tone channels attempt to turn the noise on, we're gonna remap that to the actual noise channel. So we're gonna define some bytes that are going to actually keep track of when the noise is actually enabled and disabled. So we're defining a few bytes here that we're gonna to use to track the current noise state here. We're defining those as channel noise here. The other thing is the channel number we could be asked to operate could be any value from zero to 127. So we're gonna take just the bottom two bits of that and we're going to use a lookup table to define the correct mask for the bits of the channel that we're going to use. So we're gonna use channel zero, one, two, or zero for the values of zero to three that we are passed as the channel number. Now that mask is relating to the CC bits here, which define the channel for many of the commands. Generally speaking, the commands have this format here, where the top bit is the so-called latch bit, the CC bits are the channel number, T is when we are setting the volume, and the bottom four bits are the data parameter. Now the only weird exception to that is the second byte of the tone, where the latch bit is zero, and that's a six bit data value. We're gonna see that in our code. So that's um, what we're gonna be doing today. So let's take a look at the code. Now, basically there are a couple of functions we don't need on this system. Chibi Sound Pro init is an initialization routine which we don't need. We don't need to do anything before we start playing music on this system. And Chibi Sound Pro update is for systems like the um, ZX Spectrum which need processing power to actually um, create the tone. That update routine would actually sort of regenerate the tone if required. On this system, it is not required. So that's why that just has a return command. 
Now the set routine is called whenever we want to change the attributes of one of the tone channels. And so we will pass a volume in D3, a channel number in D6, and we'll pass the pitch in D2. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the channel mask into A1 and we're then going to take the bottom two bits of the D6 register and we're going to read in a byte from that channel mask into D1. Now this is going to move the correct bits from the channel mask here and this is going to move one of these into D1 and that's so we can set the CC bits of the parameters that we pass. So that's why we're doing that. Now that's been loaded into D1. What we're next going to do is we're going to check and see what the noise state of that we're being asked to set is. So we're testing bit 7 of D6 here and that will be a 1 if the noise is on. So in that case we will jump to this label here. Otherwise the noise is now off. What we want to do though is check if it was off before because remember we're remapping all the noise parameters to this the noise channel, the third channel on this system. What we're doing here is we're checking the current state of the noise flag in the channel noise bytes here and if it was previously on and it's now off then what we actually want to do is we want to mute channel 3 and that's what we're doing here with all of these bits set to 1. Now this is using this settings here, the bit 1 here, the two CC bits set to 1, the T bit set to 1, this is a volume command and we're setting all four volume bits to 1 and that is actually the quietest volume so that is silencing the volume, that's why we're doing that here. So we're sending that parameter to C0011. That turns off the noise that was previously on and then we're clearing the flag within our noise lookup table there to say that we, that noise channel is now switched off. Now, if the noise is now being turned on, then what we want to do is we want to first actually mute the tone channel that we are currently controlling. So what we're doing here is we are moving this value into D0, oring in the bits to set the channel number and then we are sending that to C0011 in the same format as before. We're using this here with CC set to the channel that we are being asked to control and we are silencing the tone element of that channel. Now what we're going to do next is we are going to set the flag in the noise flags for the respective channel and we're going to set that to a value of 1 although any value of non-zero would have done. So we're setting that here for the virtual channel if you will telling th th that the noise is on for that virtual channel and then what we're going to do next will depend on whether we're using that simple noise function or not. Now if we're using the simple noise function basically we can only use a value of 0, 1 or 2 for our noise um, frequency. A value of 3 specifies we're using tone channel 2 which is the complex noise functionality of this. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking the top two bits of D2 which are the frequency. Now if this resulted in a value greater than 0 we're subtracting 1 and this is to give us a value of 0, 1 or 2 because as I say 3 has a different meaning. We are then oring in this setting here and what we're going to do is we're going to send this to the noise channel setting which takes the format here. The top three bits need to be one. This is because the channel number is channel three. And what we need to do is we need to set the mode, which we're going to set to white noise, and we need to set the rate. Now the rate is defined by the bottom two bits, and a value of three would be channel using channel two's frequency, which we don't want to do. So we're oring in this here, and then we're sending that value to C0011 to set the noise frequency there. Now what we're doing next is we're going to set the volume. So we're loading in the volume from D3. We can only use the top four bits of that volume, but we need to flip the bits of it. Um, again, um, the volumes the volumes on the Chibi Sound driver expect a high number to be a loud volume, but this system works in the opposite way. So we're flipping the bottom four bits to invert that. And we're flipping the top four bits because we want to set the volume of channel three. So we need these top four bits to be one anyway and so that EO is doing that for us and we're then sending that volume setting to the port to the PSG to set the sound and then we're returning that's all we need to do if the noise is on and we're creating using simple noise. Now if we're using the complex noise um, we need to do a few other things. Now the first thing we're doing is we're muting the tone of channel 2. We're using channel 2 as a frequency setting but we don't want to hear it so we're muting it using these this parameter here basically setting the volume of channel 2 to 0. 
we're just writing that there and then what we're doing next is we are setting the noise settings with this option here you'll see the bottom two bits are one and a value a rate of three will specify that the noise is to use tone channel two that's what we're going to do here and so what we're doing now is we're going to actually use tone channel two for our remaining settings um, and that's why we are moving this value here into d1 d1 remember is the mask for the cc bits and all of our following commands are going to occur to tone channel two so that's what we're doing there now one final thing that i've had to do on this system is a little bit interesting i'm having to do some bit shifts here to effectively alter the values of the frequency. Now, I didn't have to do this on the Sega Master System, and I do remember that um, it seems the random noise generation on the Genesis is different to the random noise generation on the Sega Master System, so I've had to make a, a tweak to the um, frequencies in D2 here, and I think this is... Um, I say I think this is because of the way the noise generation works on the Genesis. I think the random noise source is different because the hardware, apart from the sound processor, is different. Now, once we've done that, we're now in a position where we are going to set the rest of the parameters, either for the tone or if we are using that complex noise, noise channel 2 as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the bits of the frequency. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to shift them as well. Now, basically, we've been past 16 bits, but we can only use a total of 10. So we need to shift those 16 bits into a position like this so that we can send them as the low and high pair as these two writes to the tone channel's frequency. So that's what we're doing here. Now we need to write the load part first. So what we're doing here is we are basically shifting that low part and then we are oring in a top bit of one, oring in the channel number, and then we are writing that low parameter to C0011. So that's basically this part here with the four L bits set. That's what we've done there. And then what we're doing is we are getting the remaining top eight bits. Um, we actually only want these six here. And then what we are doing is we are going to write those as well to C0011. We don't need to set the channel number for the second write. We just need to make sure that the latch bit, the top bit is zero to tell it that we are passing the high byte of the frequency. So that's what we've done there. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set the volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to take D3 and we are going to basically shift that four bits to the right and we are going to use that to set our volume. And I've just noticed there's a command we don't need here. We can take that out. It must have been needed in an earlier version of the code. Now what we're doing finally is we're checking to see if simple noise is switched off and if noise is currently on because if it is then we've set our tone settings of channel 2 but we want to set the final volume setting of channel 3 and so we are just doing that, we're checking that here and we are setting the channel number back to channel 3 if we are in fact using complex noise and we are playing noise here. And so the final thing to do here is to flip the bits of the volume, set the top bit to 1, um, this is for this format here. And again, we need to flip the volume bits there. And we then all in our channel number and then we write the resulting byte to C0011. And that sets the volume of the sound we want to make. And there we go. So that's all there is to it. Now, um, as I say, this is a sort of a test example, if you will. Um, this is perfectly usable, but um, hopefully my um, new FM synthesis version will actually be better. I'm going to be covering that next time, and I think overall it does a better job. Uh, it's quite hard to use FM synthesis, though. It took me a couple of days of scratching my head and um, swearing at the computer to get it working, because I'm no um, genius at music by any stretch of the imagination. So if all you need is very simple sound effects, then this, I think, is perfectly adequate for you. But as I say, the range of frequencies that the... Um, the SMS backward compatibility provided was more limited than I was sort of satisfied with for music because I like to use those low pitches in my music. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.